So I chose to do the Electoral College in light of the upcoming elections, and um, it's a process that uh, we've been using that's actually written in the Constitution. That, so we've been using this process uh, since the late 1700s. Um, and if you're like me, you probably have heard of it and know some of it, but you don't know exactly how it works. Um, so I thought it would be a good idea to take a look at it, and I actually learned some things myself about it. Um, it was implemented by our forefathers. Like I said, it was... Um, established inside the Constitution in Article 2. Um, and what it does is that it's a group of people that are chosen um, each, from each party. So basically on election day, people are nominated from their parties, uh, but they can't be government officials. So it could be somebody that's helping out uh, with their parties as long as they're not paid and whatnot. So on election day, when we place our votes, not only, um, I mean, we're voting for president, like, you know, we all know, but it, it's more of an indirect vote. Uh, we're voting to vote these electors, and basically these electors uh, vouch to cast their vote based on who wins uh, via the popular vote, more or less, inside the state itself. Um, the representation of the Electoral College is directly uh, proportional to Congress. In every election, there's always going to be 100 electoral votes that come directly from the Senate, the United States Senate, so there's two per state of 50 states, is 100, and then the House of Representatives. Um, right now there's 435 members of the House of Representatives, uh, we have 50 states, so those are 435 extra votes and then the District of Columbia. They don't have any senators, but they do get three electoral votes. Um, American uh, Properties like Puerto Rico and America Samoa and Guam don't have any, uh, although they have representation in the House of Representatives, they don't get any electoral uh, votes. Here's the electoral map. So here, Florida is 27. We actually have uh, 25 congressional districts in the state of Florida. So we have 25 members in the House of Representatives plus the two senators. Uh, so that's where we get our 27. And you can see California is by far the, the largest one. It's got 55. And then there's states like Alaska and uh, like New Hampshire up there that's got three. So they only have one congressional district and the two centers, and that's where they get their uh, their votes. So how do we get a winner? Uh, as I said, if you have the 100 senators and the 435 representatives plus the three from the district, that's 538. Um, if you divide 538 by two, uh, you get 269. 269 each would result in a tie. So for a majority to come out, you'd have to have 270. Um, all of the states, or 48 of the 50 states, are winner-take-all states, which means that if a president or a, a candidate is chosen via the state, the states can receive all of the electoral votes, not a portion of it. The only exceptions are uh, Nebraska and Maine, and you actually have, they have the ability to, to split. Um, with the electors voting, they're actually not required to follow the popular vote. Um, and that's actually happened four times, in 1824, 1876, 1888, and most recently in 2000, uh, if you remember properly, or more or less, George Bush actually had less votes than Al Gore, uh, but through a bunch of politics, somehow he was president. Um, and there's actually no laws against an elector voting against the popular vote, although they are subject to a uh, fine, but the Supreme Court hasn't ruled on this, so... I mean, but it also, the electors have also voted with the popular vote over 99% of the time, so it's just something that you don't see happen, but essentially it could happen. Um, there's a lot of um, arguments with the Electoral College. Uh, Gallup polls since 1944. Um, Gallup has polled people on the, the results of the Electoral College, and it's never been below 58% of people opposing it. So more than half the people in the country think that there's probably a better way to do to, to vote for the president um, other than the Electoral College. And it's actually as high as 80% uh, in the polls in uh, 1968. Um, and this is actually the most 
the, the Electoral College is um, the most uh, opposed thing in the Constitution. And you can see on the slide, it's been uh, over a thousand constitutional amendments have been proposed. But yet somehow this has stood up since 1803. Uh, and then the other things are is that the other options of, other than the electoral college is we could just go strictly on the popular vote. Um, however, the problem with this is that, yeah, we could say, all right, well, you know, so-and-so has this many votes, but the thing is is that there's more than three parties, or there's more than two parties. Uh, so if we go with the popular vote, say that uh, this, this year Barack Obama gets 47% and John McCain gets 46%, no one has a clear majority because somebody else has taken that other five or seven percent. So that's the argument uh, going against the popular vote. And then in one of the articles I read, The Humanist, um, there was actually, it was saying that you could take a percent of the popular vote by taking uh, and kind of the electoral vote. So if there was, say, a million people in the state of Florida that voted and, uh, say, Barack Obama took uh, 60 percent of it, he would get 60% of the electoral votes, uh, so 60% of 27 would be uh, 15, 15 votes, and, and John McCain would get 12. So those are the opposition, but somehow it's still set up to the test of uh, time thus far, but uh, eventually I'm sure we might see something change.